Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Ronald Ray here, your boy with a cornbread accent. Welcome you to this week's episode of WWE Raw Recap Show. Appreciate everybody tuning in. As you can see, I'm still in lovely, yet wet, Lake Park, Georgia. Uh, at, you know, uh, camping out here at the Happy Hampton Inn. Uh, pretty good service here and all that. I'll explain that uh, on the Wrestling Gold Friday night this past week. But anyway, yes, this is the w- weekly WWE Raw recap show. So if my, my voice seems kind of low. I'm not speaking loud enough. I do apologize. Hopefully it sounds better. Like I said, uh, I'll go ahead and admit this is nowhere near as good as the home studio, but uh, our sound and visuals. So, but hey, we got to still plug away, right? Anyway, like I said, this is the uh, uh, WWE Raw recap show for this Monday. And it was the aftermath of the Bad Blood Premium, Premium Live event. Also, they started building up for the Crown Jewel Premium Live event coming up in, I think, four weeks. So, uh, a few things to get into, and thank goodness uh, it was only a two-hour Raw. Uh, I had to see that back. What do you folks think? You know, do you think folks uh, like the two-hour Raw, or were you really happy about the three-hour Raw? Let me know in the comments. Speaking of comments, let me know what you thought about this week's Raw. And if you uh, get to the end of this video, you seem to dig it. Uh, hit the like, hit the thumbs up button that tells me you like it. Uh, also, be a champ and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Well, no further ado, let's let her rip. All right, kicking off this week's Raw, we have CM Punk fresh off that victory. Uh, in the Hell in a Cell match with Drew McIntyre. Uh, he did get the big win on that one. Very good match. I don't know if you, you folks seen it, but that was actually pretty good. That's, that's what a cage match is supposed to be. You don't need uh, cylinder blocks and, um, <laughs> and needles. And you got a cage there. It's your weapon. Anyway, uh, he's, he did say last week that he didn't have any Hell in a Cell matches in him, so he is pretty banged up and not sure he's going to, uh, when he'll be back, but he thinks his fans and thinks his peers and uh, basically kind of said a see you later. Uh, probably won't be back. I'm pretty sure around Royal Rumble. But uh, as he was exiting the ring, out comes Seth freaking Rollins. Uh, they just kind of glared at each other, and Seth made his way to the ring. Uh, when he got to the ring, he said, uh, get well soon to CM Punk. Basically, so he can retire, so he can come back, and Seth Rollins can retire him. Uh, right now, Seth said he's out to destroy Monster Reed for what Reed done to him, so he challenges Reed uh, to a match anytime, any place, and this seems like a point thing here. Uh, nobody left their own on their own uh, interest music. Uh, as did Seth Rollins. Jay Uso came out. Uh, they kind of you know looked at each other. Uh, Seth Rollins sent, seemed seemed like uh, being interrupted by uh, the heat music. So uh, anyway, that's the end of that segment. Of course, uh, Jay Uso wasn't coming out to make a uh, promo. He was out to defend his Intercontinental Championship. Uh, he was defending against Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods, when he got announced, he got pretty much all booze. Uh, they see the evil turn coming to Xavier Woods. But he gets the, mat- the advantage. Big portion of the match, he hit a swing in two, two for two. Uh, but like I said, about the beginning to right about the end of, right about right here is where uh, he came off the top rope. Uh, Jay Uso counter with a super kick. Hit him with the Uso splash. Got the one, two, three. Successfully in his Intercontinental Championship. Uh, <clears throat> after a match, kind of 
shook hands with Kobe Kingston, who was at ringside, didn't get involved, uh, tried to shake the hands of Xavier Woods. Woods wouldn't have none of it uh, as he was kind of celebrating and runs in Bronson, uh, Braun Breaker, excuse me, Braun Breaker. It's that big old spear on him. Kobe Kingston trying to help him out, but he got a spear for his efforts. Hey, Xavier Woods didn't try to help nobody, but hell, he got a spear. Uh, so it looks like uh, when people are saying that Ron Breaker was turning a baby face, nah, uh, I guess he's still a heel. He, he wants another shot at that Intercontinental Championship and maybe become a two time Intercontinental Championship. So, first match they had was pretty good. Pretty sure the next match be a little bit better. Next up is the Donnie Brook match between Sheamus and Pete Dunn. And boy, was this ever a Donnie Brook match. Uh, uh, both these fans laid it in, which is what you expect from these two. Uh, Sheamus, at one point, would get the advantage. Pete Dunn would come back, uh, laying his stuff in. Uh, Sheamus would hit the 10 beats of the Bowery on top of some barrels. and But he went done there. He would. Uh, Hit white noise on two tables, uh, trying to get, get the win that way, but only got a two count. Uh, but you no, know, Pete Dunn, he wasn't done yet either. Uh, they were still fighting outside when uh, Dunn would nail Sheamus with a door from from the bar, uh, zip tie both of uh, Sheamus' hands, uh, but only got two count of that. Uh, Dunn would go for the Go to hit Sheamus with the oops, go to hit Sheamus with the cricket stick or cricket bat, uh, but Sheamus counters hits a bro kick for the one two three. All right, next up is a ten woman tag team match, uh, the Own Hollow Union, Isla Dawn and Alba Fire, with Pure Fusion Collective. So we start Sonya Bill and Shayna Baszler went up against. Natalia, Jaden Carter, Katana Chance, Lyra Valkyrie, and Selena Vega. Of course, they've uh, all these women's had some problems with, uh, especially with Pure Fusion Collective and the Unholy Union. Uh, this wasn't much of a cluster as all it was going to be. I mean, you had the, uh, uh, again, I got to put over, you know, uh, the Unholy Union. They're great as far as their double teaming moves. And they worked on Nally pretty good. Uh, but you did get to the part where everybody got their shit in. Uh, people were getting their uh, signature moves in. The Ville was beating up on Natalia when Vega comes in, jumps on the Ville. Uh, Valkyrie ties herself in, hits the top rope leg drop on the Ville, gets the win. For her team, uh, so yeah, so they did get a little bit measure of, of revenge with that victory, uh, but like I said, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now it is time for the main event, the or or for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Sami Zayn going against Gunther. Uh, Sami got a little brief advantage to begin with, but uh, Gunther would come back. Start beating him down. This overpowers Zane. Uh, nailing chops, telling him to lay down, but uh, of course, Sammy Zane wouldn't. Uh, Sammy mounted a little bit of a comeback towards the end. Uh, hit a few uh, Haluba kicks. Uh, gets another one in, but uh, but in the end, you know, when Sammy Zane was about to hit another, uh, or was, was going for another Haluba kick, another. Next with a huge clothesline, uh, covers a two, uh, gets rolled up for a two count, but Guthner connects with a, a big drop kick, power bomb for two. Uh, Guthner will clothesline Zane again, power bombs him. Um, this time Zane will kick that for one, uh, but Guthner will slap on that sleeper hold, and uh, just like they say the good old days, it was a uh, good night, Irene from there. Uh, Gunther successfully defends to eat this World Heavyweight Championship against Sami Zayn. Good match and all, but 
definitely wasn't Sammy's night. Uh, as Gunther was walking back uh, back onto the ramp, he was met by Cody Rhodes. Had a little face off, so it looks like they are kind of pretty much going to put Cody Rhodes against Gunther. Don't see either one of them uh, losing their championships anytime soon. Of course, if you watch Bad Blood, they did say that they were going to uh, have the men's WWE champion going against the men's World Heavyweight Championship for a count uh, dual championship. Uh, same way with the females, they're going to have the uh, women's champion going against the women's world champion, and they're going to fight for the same thing. Uh, so, making it a little bit interesting. Um, but like I said, I am happy that they switched it to two hours again. Felt a little rushed, but I'm pretty sure they'll figure all that stuff out pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, just tell me what you think. Do you, are you happy to see the two hour raw? I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure once they um, re kind of. Uh, I guess learn themselves how to produce a two-hour show. Uh, everything will kind of be put back in sync. Uh, I like it. <laughs> uh, I didn't have to watch the they fell back, you know, passing out or something like that and missing the rest of it. But, uh, but like I said, good episode. Anyway, uh, that does it for me on this week's WWE Raw recap show. Hopefully, everybody has a good one. Take it easy. Hey, uh, for people in the uh, I think it's Milton. It's a new storm coming through. Uh, hope you, hopefully, you folks uh, stay safe from that. Until next time. Uh, like I said, have, have a good one and take it easy. Thank you, friends. Drop a like button. Leave a comment. Also, be a champ and hit that subscribe button. You can also check me out on social media, Facebook, at Ronald Ray. On X, or Twitter, is RPATRPTV46. Until next time. So long from the Peach State of Georgia.